Here we are again, eh? Another year, another masterpiece video. How far we've come, my friends, and for the first time, we've got a film that is actually far more recent. A video about a film that came out the year in which the video was made. The title says June, but I want to talk more specifically about June Part 2, because for me, this film represents so much of why I love cinema. However, unlike the usual structure of filmmaking, story, characters, and then personal impact, I wanted to really hone in on one specific element of why I believe this film to be a masterpiece, because as I'm sure you'll agree, there are already more than enough videos on the internet by people far more intelligent than me about the story, and why Herbert's tale is a timeless epic, which by the way, can I just say, these films combined are basically the Godfather part one in space, complete with a dead dad, a traitor in the family, dead older brother figure, member of the family who isn't actually family by blood and has many near-death experiences but remains loyal to the end, the exotic and powerful love interest who he doesn't end up with but really should have because it would have solved a lot of problems, the other love interest who doesn't really get much attention from the hero turned villain protagonist because he's still not really over the other girl, and then a bunch of people People who look like ball sacks. And as for the filmmaking on a technical level, again, so many incredible videos have already been made. The visuals are stunning, the music is literally out of this world, the costumes are remarkably intricate, the locations vast, the visual effects precise, the stunt design, the editing, all the best that they can be. This series of films, as said by many already, is truly the big thing of the next generation. We started off with Star Wars, then came Lord of the Rings, followed by Harry Potter and the MCU to a certain extent. But here we are now with June. How lucky we are to be living in such a time. But with all that aside, the reason I wanted to dedicate this year's masterpiece video to Dune Part 2 is for a very specific reason, which I will spend the rest of the video exploring with you guys. And that is filmmaking mentality. What on earth are you on about? So what exactly do I mean by this and how does it relate to Dune Part 2? Well, over the last few years I have been lucky enough to follow my dreams as a filmmaker, a film watcher and all things in between. I've had conversations with people about films in almost every regard, from talking about films themselves to the process of filmmaking and of course just going out there and doing it myself, which has given me some of the greatest connections and memories of my life and I will continue to do so for as long as I breathe. But the one thing that people seem to ignore or not discuss at length is the mentality or the philosophy one needs to build in order to make films successfully, in my opinion. Although, of course, I firmly believe that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to filmmaking as that would kind of defeat the purpose, filmmakers such as Denis Villeneuve I think is a great example of the right kind of mentality. So let us explore this and why I think Dune Part 2 and cinema as a whole has benefited from this. First things first, the craft. There is a clear go the extra mile mentality that everyone involved has. I'm sure we can all agree that almost all the greatest films ever made have also come with the greatest stories, from huge endeavours like pushing a real jungle cruise up a mountain, to coordinating an army of military helicopters in the background of every shot, to the simple joys of seeing people grow up together and build relationships that go far past the film itself. Filmmaking in it of itself is full of stories that deserve to be told, and in my opinion these stories can and will only come about when people go out and really, really do it, trying their hardest to make something meaningful, be it a small drama in a room with 12 guys or a sweeping epic where the extra's catering budget is higher than most films' entire budgets. The point is that hard work and care is seen and felt no matter how big or small. This now iconic scene shot in infrared quite frankly did not need to be shot in infrared, and in the hands of filmmakers who might not have cared as much, probably would have just been done normally. But how lucky we are that it wasn't. With the new volume technology, the entire film in theory could have just been shot on a nice air conditioned soundstage. But Denny went and said this. When uh, I, I said uh, that I, uh, I agreed to do a uh, Dune tattoo, that we uh, shook hands with Legendary, I said to my parent, uh, uh, the only thing I'm asking for is to go in the real desert. They didn't shoot Jaws in a swimming pool, so I, I, I... And I can't help but love that. It is my personal opinion, as said many times before, that filmmakers are beginning to take things for granted. And the older I get, the more I will continue to double down on that. I'm going to just say it, okay? So I think the bar is lower mm -hmm. because there are way too many films being made. And therefore, I think there's a lot of directors who, uh, maybe there's too many in the field. 
and therefore, you know, I think the, the general quality, I tried to flick through, I came in late last night, tried to flick through on a big digital screen what is, there is to watch. And what there is to watch is um, anything significant doesn't go on there yet. Filmmaking has become too easy, too accessible. And whilst that means that more people, including myself, who otherwise wouldn't get the chance to make films, are now being given that opportunity, and we are seeing many, many great films because of it, it also opens the door for way more shit. And more people who, for a lack of a better word, would pollute the art form, as we have seen. Lowering the bar, as Ridley Scott says. Clearly, I'm not the only one who feels this way, and the guys at the top are also seeing this. I think that independent filmmaking, mm -hmm. in a way, has transport to TV. Mm -hmm. So that TV now is the home to good independent filmmakers. There's great yeah. stories, great things. And, and in a way, the screens are now full of films that look like TV, just in a big screen. So I mean, there is no revelation, there is no mystery, as you said, that why I'm going to pay that. And I have an 18-year-old son who's, in a way, I learn from him what he's getting from the world. And, and what have you learned from him? That, that, that uh, what Quentin is saying, that to make him go to a cinema, he has to have a big reason because almost everything he can find accessible immediately in, in, in home. And that clip came out in 2016. And whilst this sounds very elitist, Films becoming more accessible has led to people taking cinema for granted. So now what happens when filmmaking becomes more accessible? That is a thought that is as terrifying as it is exciting. Because with more people making films than ever, the need to protect and preserve, as well as allowing the art form to evolve well and naturally, should now be at the forefront of everyone's minds. This is not a video saying that everyone must do what the Dune 2 guys did. It's a video saying that the brilliance of this film is that the team went and made the best possible version of the movie they were supposed to make, without compromising, without taking the easy route, without being negligent. The ambition to challenge oneself at all times, to constantly strive to exceed one's own personal artistic expectations, that was a mouthful, as well as push the boundaries of what our medium can conjure up, is something more filmmakers need to be doing. If our medium is to move forward in the right path, I believe it is important we learn from films such as Dune because it is a film that strives at all times to exceed its own expectations, not just in the huge loud spectacle scenes but in the smaller moments that most may ignore. The close-ups are just as intricately designed as the wides, the subtle non-verbal expressions are just as carefully thought out as the huge speeches. Attention is given to every factor of this film. Sure, I understand that not everybody can just go out there and make a $200 million movie in a desert, but with great power and great studio reputation comes great responsibility, and Denny and the cast and crew have understood that wholeheartedly, inspiring the little guys at home to do better. There is a reason people don't respond to heartless mass-produced items made with no love and care. When they see something that feels real, that feels respected, that feels loved, they respond to it. And I believe this in every area of life. So to see it shown within the making of a movie is rather wonderful, I must say. One of the great quotes I remember from Denny was when he was asked why he made Blade Runner 2049, and this is what he said. I do it because I deeply love the first movie so much. I don't want somebody else to fuck it up. I want, I want to do, give everything, knowing that I will probably be, uh, be banned for uh, cinematic community about everybody who's gonna hate me because I, I, I dare to do that. And, 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 uh, but there was like a strong call to do it, no uh, thing. And I agreed before I was able to do it because I made peace with the idea that it might be in my last film. The, the, the doing this and it made sense to me because I love that story so much. But, uh, uh, but we have that to, to make the peace with the idea that it's, it's, I'm gonna be hated by, uh, mm -hmm. and I just do it by pure love of cinema. That simple. Same here with June. This is a man who has loved the material since he was a child, drawing storyboards at school of how he would make it. That kind of love and care trickles down into all departments. Notice that whenever Denis or the cast or crews talk about the film and their experiences making the film, they speak about it as if they are talking about someone that they love. Everyone involved is making this film from their heart and because they believe in it. Notice that in all of the behind the scenes photos and videos, Denis Villeneuve, Greg Fraser and the rest of the heads of departments aren't just hiding in a video village tent somewhere to hide from the sun. 
They are right there, in the thick of it with everyone else. They are leading by example, they are leading from the front, which quite frankly is also how this film is leading other films of the 2020s by example. I have never bought into the idea that filmmaking should be easy, that it should be comfortable, that you turn up, you shoot, and you go home. Nothing great has ever been accomplished by people who simply choose the easy path. And I love this film because at every turn, I can't help but feel the filmmakers chose the difficult path because they knew it was the right one. And so for me, Dune Part 2 is not just brilliant because it is a film made with an artist's touch, but it is a film made with a leader's mind. And that is what I mean by filmmaking mentality. And that is why I believe Dune Part 2 is so important and why it absolutely is a masterpiece.